debate and they get emotional and they get angry uh, on these type of things. Uh, I simply want to talk about uh, this idea and concept. And ever since you did that, I started to see more and more things on Facebook today talking about why capitalism is broken and why there's blah, blah, blah. Yet people still want to come here instead of other places. He was giving examples of, of Denmark. Um, and how wonderful it is there. I'm, I'm sure it is amazingly wonderful, uh, but if we were about 10 to 20 times the size of uh, Denmark, things are a little different, right? Uh, completely. Um, and again, uh, any of these opinions or views, it's Roman's fault, <laughs> right? But I think it's, it's very important to talk about these things. And what I put was, okay, capitalism is not perfect. Um, and I'm sure socialism is not perfect. Uh, what 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 is your two cents on that? Again, any subject. I try to. Any great debater is able to debate the side that he doesn't even personally believe in. I was taught that San Francisco State, one of my favorite classes. And but what it forced me to do is also be empathetic to the other side. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, Yes, capitalism is going to have its flaws, but that's the American dream for immigrants. That's what gives them, as long as they know they have a shot. And not that, hey, you were born of X family in X thing, China. So you're, no matter how hard you work, you're never going to climb up. Um, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, in my opinion. I just wanted to get, you're much wiser, much older than me, your thoughts of, you know, these ideas of, of socialism that... Well, you know, you could, you could see how socialism has worked. Mm -hmm. You could look at countries that try it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize Denmark as a socialist country. Mm -hmm. They have some socialists socialistic ideas uh, in, in the way that they care for their population of, of, of homelessness and health care. And I think we could learn a lot from them. However, if you try to buy a sandwich in Denmark, it'll cost you 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you need to, uh, you know, and the, the stores are often empty. I've been to Denmark, and I could tell you that for the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Every action has equal and opposite. Yeah, action, so yeah. if it costs you, uh, you know, $15 to buy a beer, you you know, mm -hmm. the, you're not getting the tourism to go a little you, down. Yeah, you, you, you may not get as much uh, sales as you would hope. Um, on the other hand, I think capitalism could could uh, could run astray as well. But I do believe in the fact that uh, while capitalism uh, isn't uh, perfect, uh, just like democracy isn't perfect, mm -hmm. it's the best system uh, that has worked. It's uh, you know it, it, it's a system that works better than all the others, mm -hmm. and, and and I've 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 gone to China, like I said, I've gone to Denmark, I've gone to to Mexico, I've gone to many uh, parts of the world, right. I've lived in the Middle East. I could tell you that dictatorships don't work either, mm -hmm. uh, and I could tell you that uh, illiberal democracies, people who don't listen to one another, um, even if they are democracies, mm -hmm. uh, they don't work. Uh, mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the, the beauty of living in the United States is that you're, you are entitled to your opinion. Nobody's going to put you in jail for it. Always. You're entitled to work as hard as you want and as, 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 as and you can be as lazy as you want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times your reward will be commensurate to how hard you work and ho or how educated you are. And I think uh, people do lose sight of that. Um, to be in a country where what you put in is exactly what you get out yeah. is only only fair, right? Yeah. And if you look at the immigrants that are coming, mm -hmm. if you look at immigrants that are coming right now from India, from China, from Mexico, they're all entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They all came here to work hard. And a lot of times, you know, my kids included, they get a little lazy. You know, <laughs> mom and pop are taking care of them. So you have a lot of people that actually live here that don't appreciate the system I think as much as my parents uh, did uh, show me show me a great man who's the son of a great man right and that's usually what happens and kind of the pressure I put on myself is it's like you know this I never fill a great man's shoes and my dad went from nothing worked his tail off and that's the reason you know I'm totally grateful but I have to also push myself to remember where I came from remember what we've been through but what I ask myself is how are we going to get this to our, our kids uh, do we do we torture them? There's a weird attribute to struggle versus success and adversity. I'm sure there's many other great ways to go about it, but that's just so uh, interesting to me. You see the the correlation where, uh, well, why are why are all the Indians gas station owners? Why are they uh, all this? There, there's there's no 
uh, secret to it. They just didn't want a better life. They've been through hell. Uh, you look at San Francisco, they were treated, uh, some of the Chinese were treated uh, the worst when building the railroads at this time. Now they're all the property owners, right, in that way. So I think there is a uh, kind of a correlation to that. Right. In yeah. That way. The, the American dream is being your own boss. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, and, and determining your future. Right. And I think there's it's still that way. I think it's a little harder to get to because uh, right now I think you not only have to work hard, but you have to be educated, yep. especially in this area. Yep. Uh, and humans, we want to look at capitalism, and social and we want to we want to complain. We want to focus on the negative and more times it's always more negative and positive instead of focusing on what the positive things about capitalism. And I don't, you know, blame people. I think it's really comes back to uh, we're used to being chased by the saber-toothed tiger. We're naturally in. No, I, and I'm serious about that. I thought this was brilliant that we're constantly, what's wrong? What's going on? This, that. We're constantly in this, you know, genetically we're in the survival mode of we got to keep moving so we tend to always have a negative bias on everything i think that's essentially where this question came from and people are on social media it's so interesting to me when i post something ridiculously positive no one cares mm -hmm. but as soon as you post something that's controversial or negative or probably not a good thing you get all these dopamine likes and pressures and people are talking engaging and what that does and why i fear for our youth is they're like well i need to keep doing that I need to keep doing that. I need to post pictures with less clothes on. All the, the wrong things because that's our social environment. Yeah. That's our social uh, world. But I guess they'll get older like, like I did. I was a crazy kid too and uh, with time and with education. Like yeah. you've always said, um, this, was, this was brilliant. Out of all the talks I did, I mean, these are real issues that, again, people don't like to talk about because it's, you know, quote unquote politically correct so uh, I'm honored and grateful that you know you can have these discussions and that's what in my opinion being a patriot is, is all about being able to talk about those things L last two um, when I explored um, I, I stopped sorry mom I stopped selling cannabis years ago years ago uh, and that, that was a, a personal choice but I also started watching documentaries like Taboo and so forth and we can do both uh, in one how important do you feel um, and I will always be pro uh, uh, cannabis but I agree that it is worse you think back to the prohibition days it's worse to make something illegal that it would actually uh, hurt things more versus when you regulate it the way we are now uh, and it actually produces crime kind of will help tax incentives because what happens when we make it illegal we completely put it back to the black market right and we basically Pablo Escobar those type of things if you want to uh, you know kill what was the pro prohibitions guys big name not, not a but anyways if you want to the quickest way to make him not rich is by to make it legal and regulated and that puts them in turn out of business i'm thinking about the big alcohol mogul in the 1920s the most feared guy i can't remember but um do you agree with that that's yeah, yeah I'm again. Capone. 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 yeah so, about. so yeah you know you're I, I, you know i'm a libertarian at heart to be quite frank with that's you cool, but and I, I hate titles <laughs> be you uh, and I, I, I would classify myself the exact same way yeah independent libertarian that's a great way to put it so i i, I believe in giving the people to make their choices, including the bad ones. I've heard Ron Paul say that. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you, uh, you know, uh, honestly, even if you want to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, I don't right. think that there is an, you, you know, shouldn't go to jail if you don't yeah. miss if, out on that. You, should you get shouldn't have to build a, you know, $16 billion net right. to, to, to stop people. that one person right. you know, from killing themselves. They might kill themselves in other ways. 100%. Uh, and so, when it comes to drug use, I think you're right. We need to address the problem through um, through education uh, and through um, and what, commercial. What's, what's crazy is when people find out something is legal, uh, the use goes down dramatically because it's not. It's like for the kids. It's not sexy anymore. Yeah, it's not yeah. sexy anymore. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's like mom saying, whatever you do, do not go to the top of that hill, right? What are you going to do? You're, you're going to want to go check out the top of that uh, hill. So that's many ways. And obviously, these are open-ended topics that have many different views, many different debates. I think that it's important for all views to, again, you know, objectively talk about these things. 
and forget about the product. I think from what I just said, whether it's cannabis or it's uh, prostitution, I also think there's a method to, you know, maybe Amsterdam does it for, for tourism, but I try to see both sides and think that, okay, these women are back to the black market. There's, uh, you know, uh, of sex slaves. There's no uh, there are people being kidnapped. There's a whole market to that. And uh, I know these are controversial, crazy topics. So I apologize. I think that they're important to talk about where if it's regulated, like let's see, Germany, Amsterdam, you name it, all these European companies that maybe there could put in regulations where, um, you know, they're, they're, you take it away from the black market, women are being abused. If they choose to do this in sound minds and um, they can be healthy and make sure they're getting, you know, tested before in the interview process, et cetera. And, and for some people, again, they don't want to talk about these issues because especially in the Asian households, I'll tell you right now, my dad's probably going to back at me when I get home right now. But, uh, but these are uh, important to talk about because there's a method to their madness. And like you said about Denmark, we can explore those things. So um, I know the underlying goal was to talk about uh, San Jose. We, we had those, but I wanted to pick your brain about more of these important topics and, and why I was, you know, so impressed with you because um, it's okay to think differently. It's okay to be curious um, and think outside the box as long as you feel you have enough uh, logic. So I encourage people to don't always be afraid to speak up because you have to go with the norm of what everybody's um, talking about. Right? Yeah, well, I, I I often get criticized. You know, recently we had a uh, I, I, I was on the losing end of a conversation where we ban coupons for cigarettes. Okay. You know, and I and I thought you know all my co- council colleagues wanted to show how against smoking they were mm-hmm. by banning coupons for cigarettes. And, right. And so you know. Uh, you can ban the coupons for cigarettes. You can even ban cigarettes, but you're not really uh, you know, so you're solving the problems, you yeah. know. Uh, and then the only thing that can stop people from smoking is, you know, the, the social. It, it is no no longer socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. If you make if you make cigarettes socially unacceptable, mm-hmm. then you've changed the, the the conversation. Right now, marijuana is socially becoming more and more socially acceptable. In the 70s and 60s, doctors were examining you while smoking a cigarette in the room. Exactly. You know? And so and so now it is more socially acceptable for you to be uh, smoking a bong yes. than it is for you to be smoking a cigarette. So, so times change, yeah. uh, but the but the the fact that we shouldn't in my belief is we shouldn't ban things, right? You know, for social mores. That's the quickest way to make it go through the roof mm-hmm. and the pricing to increase um, and same thing goes. If cigarettes were illegal tomorrow, the price would go up and people would be on street corners. The market would open for black market to start slanging cigarettes. And people would start fighting and killing over cigarettes. People would start going to jail over cigarettes, right? And I think that throwing, well, that, that's a whole other topic too, and, and throwing people uh, into jail over those these things. I can't remember if it was Sweden or Switzerland, but their case study of they decreed that a really bad heroin problem, and mm-hmm. they did the same thing. They changed and said, well, we're throwing these junkies in jail, and they come out, and then they're going to get thrown right back in. We're not solving the problem. So then they started you know, creating these centers when the person, they see a judge, a doctor, and a psychologist, and then they get actually get treatment plans on how to get off. They give incentives for turning in the needles. And what happened in turn is they decreased from like an, it was hitting a close to 90% rate. Everybody was addicted. And, and then it in turn brought things down dramatically. So uh, I believe it was a, a, a woman that was in charge of all of this. Uh, she may have been the, whatever you want to call them, the, the president of the country in a way, and was very commended and felt that it should be studied because there's kind of a, an issue that our solution, you know, during some of those Nixon and Reagan times and so forth, any other time um, that we just throw those people in jail and talk to the cops. They're coming right back out. And when they come right back out, what's going to happen? They can't get a job. they got a record now, right? They can't do this, so they're going to do whatever they can to sell it. It's a cycle in that way. It doesn't matter if you're Indian, Black, Mexican. It affects all, it affects all of us, and everybody goes through that, so... I think, again, like, like you said, being open to having these discussions and not just tabooed and uh, especially in our Asian Malaysian culture, all these conversations we want to just wipe under the rug 
pretend they're not an issue until something really bad happens and then we wish we would have talked about these things with our kids and um, openly so um, I think those, those things are important to uh, talk about do you, you disagree with you know, no, absolutely. I talk with my kids about drug use all the time. I do think that we need to, to uh, I, I, I definitely have uh, some misgivings about do, making these hard, hard drugs that, at least the ones that, that mess with your mm-hmm. mind. And Extremely addictive, permit. yeah. Uh, those, those are ones I, I would have some apprehensions of making illegal. However, we need to do a better job educating our kids. Uh, you, you know, we have tons of tons of commercials on television telling people not to smoke mm-hmm. but we don't have a whole lot of tell people yeah. uh, preaching about not getting into harder drugs cocaine or what the crack or whatever whatever happens what what the what the drug of choice is right. we need to have commercials about you know again edu- those, education education is the key to change perception what are the effects and not effects and uh then, then let them be intelligent enough to decide and make the decision when they are educated of the consequences like eh, nah yeah. I'm okay with not doing that, but if they don't know, uh, yeah. they're going I, to... I used to be part of a group uh, that um, call, called Ahmed and Cares, where we, we, we actually showed up to ca- school campuses with wrecked right. cars uh, from people that were driving under the influence or driving distracted. Interesting. You know, and so, so we showed the, the kids the consequences. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, we actually put people in a makeshift car even, you yeah. know, like a... And then we 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 uh, we let them text while they're yeah. driving. That I was right when you said that I was going to jump to that. And what people aren't realize in 2017, I'm sure we're going to see more of this. That not only are, are the passengers distracted, the drivers distracted, and hopefully, uh, phone just died. For Facebook Live, that's okay. I'm going to be able to upload. We're still recording here. Um, that. Uh, hopefully the people will be able to to see that I'm not sure how we're going to adapt to this hopefully all these self-driving cars will be done by that so we'll all be writing essays while we're in the front seat uh, yes that's but, what we'll be doing <laughs> yeah that's, that's the reality I think less than 20 years um, but that's going to start to become an issue so what do we do we can ticket 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 or we can do our best to uh, to educate people yeah. on it only takes a millisecond and you know how guilty would you feel if you know uh, you, you, yeah. know, you lost all your family members to you to something like that. I yeah, think doing we, that. We, we even, you know, in my in my first year, we even created a uh, campaign for kids to make their own videos. Mm-hmm. And we did a, a challenge for whoever, whoever had the best video mm-hmm. uploaded to YouTube and whoever got the most hits. Interesting. And uh, DGDG uh, sponsored it. And we Incentive. need ten thousand dollars worth of prizes. Incentive to the kids. So and I'm sure they produce awesomely creative stuff. Great videos. Right. It was called SJ Between the Riot Lines, and I think you can still log on to that website and, and see the uh, videos. You guys can check that kids, out, guys. Kids I think uh, I, I think that's all great stuff, and I think it's important that we can continue to study people and how they react to things in their psychology. As we give people tickets for speeding, we want it to improve in that. If you put up one of those radar meters that just flash in yellow, um, even if it doesn't even mean whether you're speeding or not, people immediately naturally react to that and slow down and it's been proven versus giving them a ticket making them angry them looking around and speeding up more so i think that's uh, another key that um you know i think plenty of research will continue to go to and hopefully does and we're all we're all open to that madness so um i think that's very cool the reason we choose yellow the reason we choose red for brake lights and stop lights and mcdonald's because you know it, it grabs us right but um man i can't thank you enough I'm not. I'm not sure how any of my talks are on top of this talk because, and you being so open to it. And I think gentlemen like yourself are always weary, weary of their image or what will people think. But in my opinion, you know, Mr. Thomas now and being real and talking about those things behind the door that nobody wants to talk about and not being politically correct. In my opinion, you know, it will make things skyrocket. Um, as far as uh, and that's important. We're just being transparent and being ourselves so mr Carlos, thank you my pleasure also my very pleasure. much great having i'm sure we'll, we'll we'll hang out again but uh, mr johnny Thomas, ladies and gentlemen um anywhere we can check you out uh, your website sure yeah it's johnny uh, johnny Camus on facebook yes. and it's uh, uh d10 so d10.com yep sjd10.com wonderful yeah Google Johnny Carmes. Yeah. Everything will come up. Yep. Uh, but thank you again, sir. All right. My pleasure. Take care. We're signing out. So-